Veeam Backup for Microsoft Office 365 gives you the ability to securely backup and protect your Office 365 data from accidental deletion, security threats, and retention policy gaps. Additionally, with this solution, you can easily restore Exchange emails, calendar events, and contacts, Office 365 SharePoint sites, as well as OneDrive for Business files and folders in a few simple clicks. Let's take a look at the demonstration. In this demonstration of Veeam Backup for Microsoft Office 365, we're going to begin by connecting to an organization. To do this, we right-click on Organizations and select Add Organizations. In this menu, we'll be able to see the types of organizations we have to choose from. When we click on the Select Organization Deployment type, we'll see we have the option for Office 365, a hybrid deployment, or even an on-premise deployment for Exchange or SharePoint. You can also select the services you'd like to protect, including Exchange Online, SharePoint Online, and OneDrive for Business. Let's cancel out and take a look at the rest of the menu. At this time, we're going to connect to an existing organization, which is right here. We right-click, select Edit, and now we see the menu for the pre-existing organization. In the first menu, we see we're connected to a Microsoft Office 365 organization. When we select Next, we'll see the Region option. If we click on Region, you'll see the option to select multiple regions if they're there. And then below that, we'll see the option to select different authentication methods, including modern and basic authentication options. Let's select Next. Under Exchange Online Credentials, we're going to specify an administrative account. So we paste the password. Below, we can grant this user account required roles and permissions via a checkbox or even use the same credentials for SharePoint Online and OneDrive for Business. That's only if this account has access to be able to manage these roles. Let's select Next. And now we can watch it verify step by step as it connects up to this organization. Once this is completed, we can select Finish and then go down to the Backup Infrastructure option in the left menu. Here we we'll see some additional components that we'll be able to configure. The first component we're going to look at is the proxies. We'll right-click and select Edit on one of the pre-configured proxies. The first window will show which system this proxy is located on. Additionally, we can see the port that it's going to be communicating through. Let's select Next to continue to the next menu. Here we'll be able to see the credentials that we'll be using to connect to the proxy server. Once we've completed all of these steps, the last menu will allow us to deploy the proxy into the environment. The next step we'd like to look at is the properties. So let's right click on this deployed proxy and go to the properties menu. Under the general tab of the backup proxy properties, we see the options to set the number of threads as well as limit the network bandwidth. If we check the box below, we will be setting this to one megabyte per second. The Internet Proxy tab would allow us to either use the Internet Proxy settings from the management server or hard code our own below. Let's go ahead and click Cancel and move forward. Let's take a look at the backup repositories that have been configured. We'll right click on the default repository and select Edit. Here we see the name of that repository as well as a description. Let's select Next. In this menu, we can see the proxy that this is attached to. This is the proxy that Office 365 information will be stored in and will not be shared with any other Veeam products. Here we see the path to that repository, so let's select Next. The retention policy is where we configure how long we're going to retain this data within this repository. As you can see, it's set for 10 years currently. This repository is using the item level retention option, which means each item has this retention policy attached to it individually. This means any items older than 10 years will be purged from this repository. We also have snapshot based retention, which is more similar to Veeam Backup and Replication or the Veeam Agents, meaning we use a snapshot of that mailbox and restore it in the exact same state. In the bottom right, we see the advanced options. Once we select this, we'll see a window open that allows us to apply retention policies either at a daily or monthly interval to remove the items or snapshots we no longer need. Let's select Cancel and then we'll select Finish to complete the process. That completes the creation of the repository. Let's zoom back out and take a look at some existing jobs. To do this, we'll select Organizations on the left side and then we'll see some of these pre-existing jobs show up on the right. 
Once we right click, we see the option to start the job, or we can even select one of the existing Veeam Explorers. In this example, it shows Exchange. We could also select the SharePoint Explorer. Let's go down and select Edit. When we created the name, we included 10-year retention to make it easier to be able to locate this job. Let's select Next. Next, we see the menu that allows us to select the objects to back up. We could choose to back up the entire organization, but in this example, we chose to back up the following objects. And below you'll see we have one listed object. We select Edit, and it shows that we're backing up Mail and the Archive. But we've selected not to back up OneDrive or the SharePoint sites. In the next menu, we're given the option to exclude objects. In this example, you'll see that we have included a public mailbox. I can also select the Add button on the right to exclude users, groups, or even specific sites if needed. In the next menu, we simply set up the proxy and the repository through a drop-down list, and then we can select Next. In the Scheduling Options menu, we can run the job automatically, either daily or periodically. The drop-down window will give you many options to choose from. We also have the option to select how many times we want to retry a failed object. And then below, you'll see the option to terminate a job if it exceeds the allowed backup window. This can also prevent jobs from consuming too much bandwidth outside of that said window. Once we click Save, we complete the process of configuring backup for Office 365. To give a complete demonstration of how this solution works, we're going to go down to the bottom left hand and open up somebody's email. And in here, we're going to choose an individual email to delete. And to ensure it's been completely deleted, we're going to go into the deleted items and remove it from here as well. This will ensure that we're not pulling it from the deleted items. To recover this item, we return to the Backup for Office 365 interface, select Explore, and open the Explorer for Exchange as this was an Exchange Mail item. In this example, we're going to pull from the most recent pool of data. To do this, I expand the store in the Explorer interface. From here, I can select the mailbox that I was just in and go down to the inbox. To simplify the process of finding this mail and all of the other emails, we're going to use the search option, and we're going to search for something that we know is already in the email. Now that we've isolated the individual item that we're looking for, let's right-click and take a look at some of the options. From that drop-down menu, we see the options to open this email or open the item's location. We can restore this to the original email location or to a different Exchange server. We can also export it to the desktop as a PST file or export it to a separate location as a PST file. We can save it to the desktop as an MSG file or to a different location. Additionally, we can send this to the original email location or to a different mailbox. We're going to restore back to the original mailbox of the user for this example. The user account that we're using for this example does not have the access to restore this to the original location, so we will be prompted to put in credentials that will allow us to do this. This user will also need to have permission to recover data within this organization. Once we provide the name and the password for this account, and we select OK, in a short period of time, we'll see that this email has been restored to its original location. Selecting the See More option will show us more information about this job. Now when we go back to that inbox that we saw earlier, we'll see that that item that we deleted has now been recovered back to its original location. That will complete the Backup for Office 365 demonstration. Thank you.